All right, hey everybody, it's Eric Meyer. A uh, long time no data analysis. Going to look at some data from my friend Joe, awesome uh, Mustang driver, HPD3 progressing driver. A um, lot, lot of time at Gingerman, and he just did some laps at Mid Ohio. So here we go. He sent me this data via Track Attack, and I'm going to go down here. You're also always welcome to share your data and. If I have time, I'll take a look at it. So uh, here's Joe right here. Here's his owner name. He shared this with me. And it was uh, Mid-Ohio. And it looks like right here, he actually learned the track and figured it out when we had the chicane uh, course or the club course, right? He's actually going faster than on the pro course when he learned it. So we're going to look at that one. I'm going to look at that one right there. And Joe, I know you're watching, so I'm going to um, speak to you sort of in the first person and let people uh, listen or understand. Show all the great things that you're doing and show the opportunity. So what I did is uh, I started out with, uh, uh, since I Joe, since, since I know that Joe knows uh, a bit about data, I'm going to jump to the neat stuff. So I'm going to do the big three like we always talk about. And I'm going to add this right here. Um, this isn't really a, um, a um, tutorial as much as it is, a, is a, a review. So I'm looking to exploit and go right to, uh, right to some opportunities. Um, what I know, I know that this was Joe's first weekend at Mid-Ohio. So this is with a grain of salt. So I might think see things in here that are, are still sort of... Uh, learning to exploit the finer nuances of the track, which would be normal. Joe and I spent very little time this past weekend with NASA Great Lakes uh, talking about the finer track nuances, and he was just doing his thing. So here we go. So the so uh, I added total acceleration. So this total acceleration down here is the one I'm going to be using the most. I'm going to go right to turn one. I'm going to put the cursor over here in the apex of one. And if you see down here, in uh, where my cursor is, right here, um, you can see that there actually is a dip in uh, G sum or total acceleration. And if you go right above it, you can see that corresponds right here with a big old handful of throttle. This tells me automatically that he was uh, going too slow because he could add all this throttle still in the cornering process. See right there on the track map? He's got a big old handful of, of throttlings at apex. This value should be lower than that. Ideally, you can barely go to throttle. Now, for this longer turn one corner, you got to go to throttle to set the rear end. The longer the corner, and which is typically the higher speed of the corner, the earlier you brake, the lighter you brake, the uh, the more you're off brake and back to a maintenance throttle to set the rear end to balance the car, um, and and that's a that's a, a general rule. So what we see here is that he's doing that, but he's got a big old handful of throttle as noted in this 0.2 positive longitudinal g 0.5 and where its location is just off the apex, and we also see the dip right here. Ideally, this is a big crown in this dip. So this dip right here was a giveaway that something happened where he wasn't using all the tire. That tire has got a 1-1 one, one G. Actually, over here, where it's loaded, he's getting 1-3. But that's a super tight corner where you would get more long Gs. Not so much for a long, faster corner. But with that said, that car's doing 1-1. One, one. But for some reason down here, it's doing less than that. Uh, uh, an honest, uh, an honest two tenths left less. And where that's happening, right there at apex, almost exactly corresponds to where he's going to a bunch of throttle. So roll that sucker in here, two more miles an hour, and that should have you go to less throttle. That'll make you faster. That'll make this thing more rounded. Right here, because we want this, we want this total G or G sum not to have a dip in it. Okay, so just because that might be a fluke, we're going to add a second lap to that. 
And I'll just pick this one down here. So I'll pick them both. I'm going to see. Yep, look at that. It's the same exact thing. See that? Sometimes, if it was traffic, that could explain it. But right now, we're two for two right there. Just for fun, I'm going to add a third lap. All right, same thing. You can see it right here, right? You can see that dip occur right here in all three cases. So we know that's a tendency or a habit, um, and which is normal for turn one at Mid-Ohio. So there's uh, opportunity one, Joe. Uh, and by the way, you're normal. So I'm um, looking in here, the same scenario in here. And if you look over at the cursor in the track map, a lot of people don't maximize this part of the corner. They hug the inside and they, uh, they literally, they, they, they overslow. And this can be an incredibly fast corner until you get right to here, to uh, entry of the keyhole. Okay, um, how can we look at that to see that? Well, we're going to see what kind of braking and G's that he has on the way in. Okay, so we got a big old brake right here. We got a bunch of brake, right? And then coming off the brake. So if you look over at the track map, you can see that there's a big old bunch of braking right here and that the speed actually falls down quite a bit. Uh, I'm going to suggest to you that the entry on this corner from, look at the track map, from here all the way to about here is super fast, is faster than people realize. You can see in the speed trace that he picked up the throttle uh, a little bit and punched it before coming in here, but see how that trails right here? It's slowing down. This is a really fast corner and uh, the approach should be over the far left, excuse me, the far right where you're just mowing down the uh, mowing down the curbing and just fly in there and uh, I like to approach about one-third from the uh, left-hand side of the track and come around that curbing. Um, that allows you to carry more speed. A lot of people take it far left and actually hit the curbing that is uh, about right about right here, and it's just too tight of a radius. This is a big, fast corner. Make it big by making your line uh, a little bit larger uh, around this corner right here. Okay, we're going through. So I'm looking at his total acceleration right through here, and this is really nice. Look at that. 1.3 at the apex. And he goes to a big bunch of throttle and starts a straight. Joe, that looks really, really nice. You can see right here uh, the corresponding shift points and the decrease in the longitudinal acceleration. So chances are he's in third gear coming out of here. He switches to four uh, and switches to five. We can see his terminal is a whopping 136 uh, going on the back straight before he gets to the brake. Just for fun, we're going to add these other laps just to see if there was traffic in front of them, right? He said 136, and sure enough, another there's a 137, another 136, and another uh, and a 33 probably because of traffic. So pretty consistent. Okay, threshold braking zone. This is a big threshold braking zone. Big, 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 big. We're going to learn all about um, this driver's brakes and what happens. And so... What we're going to do is, first thing we're going to do is we're going to see what maximum longitudinal decel is. And you can see there's three varied uh, values, 1.1, 1.1, and 0.9 and change, right? What I'm going to look at here is this total Excel. And what we're going to do is find off Find out what happens when he come up, comes off brake. So if you look right here at the total acceleration, he's only using, well, there's some variety here. And again, it could be uh, for traffic. His fastest lap, the green lap, is using the least amount of the tire, or least amount of the total Gs right there, 0.6, right? 
that should be higher. That should be closer to the to 0.9 or even one. And you can see at the top graph, he's actually um, it, this this is the process where he's turning in. So what's really happening here is he's coming off the break before he turns in, and this is where this is where he's using all the tire. And from here forward, look on the track map. From here forward down to here, he's not using all the tire. So that's the brake release component. Right? Do you see that? From here, see the Mickey Mouse hand on the G-sum on the bottom? From here to here, for some reason, he's not using all the tire and three things. So the main thing to say is I need to use more of the tire on the track map. Look at the track map from here to here. And what that is, is the area where I'm coming off the brake to where I go to wheel input, right? Let me show you how that is again. So here is the lowest part of the G sum value, which is a combination of lat and long. And if we go way up here to where that's at, you can see that's where he initiates wheel input. So this car is very, for whatever reason, this car is uh, should be very easy to uh, to turn in. If it's not, it's car related. If it is, this is driver related. And where the opportunity is is before or to the left uh, or upstream, and it's from here on the track map over to here. And as you can see on the long G, this is in the braking process. So Joe, I would I would take a look at how you're coming off the brake and turning the wheel because there looks like there's a fair amount of opportunity. You can either move your brake zone down a half a marker and then another half a marker and slowly blend those together. You're blending the release of the brakes and the turn of the wheel because that's what's happening, right? Remember, this is their opportunity down here, the Mickey Mouse hand. Right there, as you begin to turn the wheel, it says you're not using the really the tire grip, not using uh, on your best lap. You're, you're not using it all. Matter of fact, you're using, well, not quite half of it, but probably two thirds of what that car can do. So there's your opportunity. Now, if it feels uncomfortable and you're like, man, my car feels squirrely, that's car related. And that's only something that you could tell us. Uh, and uh, that might be, hey man, when I uh, when I try to do that, Eric, the, the car is just not stable. Uh, it could be a, a myriad of things, all, all answered by how you would describe the feel, the kinesthetic feel of the car. And to get that feel of the car, you need a good seat, you need to be, uh, you need to just be relaxed in your car and let that seat hold you in there. If you're bracing yourself in your seat um, and you got your legs pinned and your shoulders pinned, you can't feel shit um, because you're spending all your core energy holding yourself in. You need to just sit in the car and say, what's it doing? Seat of the pants, what's it doing? If your car turns in really easy here, it's it's driver. If you're battling your car, it, it's more car. It's, it's actually always driver, um, but in some cases it could be a lot of the car because I don't know what your car's doing. Okay, let's continue to look around here. Again, we're looking on the bottom on the G-sum, and there's usually opportunity right here. Let's take a look at that. And it's coming down the hill. These actually look pretty nice. Right here, we're going under the bridge. Very nice. This would indicate a uh, uh, a significant turn in. We're really loading the car. Look at that. That's his highest lat G's anywhere. Right there. That's lat. Right? It's lat. Just for fun, let's put an elevation in here, which is uh, which is right in front of my big uh, not elevation. We're looking for uh, altitude. That's it. I'm going to try to expose the um, the hump. Right? See that right there? See that right there? 
elevation down at the bottom. So what Joe's doing is he's actually using that uphill compression and he's and he's taking advantage of it. So this is compression going up the hill um, where he's got wheel input, right? It's just, if you can see, it would be on the left side of the track curbing, right? Where the right side of the car is loaded up and he's getting a, a ton out of it, which you can see as this, um, this uh, GPS speed uh, continues to climb. Nice work, Joe. Look at that. Look at your total acceleration. Look at that. You just nailed it for the green lap, your fastest lap. Crushed it. Look at all that. 1.6. That's your highest value anywhere on the whole entire track. Anywhere. Catch that? Nice work. Okay, we're going to come into, um, move this track map over a little bit. I'm going to come right into here and see what's up. Move this down a little bit. I'm going to look at what's happening right here. I'm actually here. I'm going to look at minimum roll speeds. And for these three particular uh, laps, they look all consistent within a under two miles an hour. Nice work. This might be traffic related. Look at the variation as we come in here and also the mid corner min speed. There's a 14 miles an hour difference, followed by a big old add of throttle. We can see here a lot of variation, maybe because of traffic, maybe not. Joe, you'd have to tell us that video would confirm it. Okay, what I'm gonna what I'm looking at here. So I'm looking at total acceleration, and I'm just gonna take off and look at our green lap here, right here. Well, now it's a red lap. I'll take that. Again, you're going to a lot of throttle right there, a lot of throttle, which indicates that you're slightly over braking. Um, Joe, this is uh, turn 13, by the way, these are old school numbers. If you talk to the old school cats like me and older dudes, they've uh, uh, since renumbered the track. Just call this 13 and call up here, look at the track map, 11. Okay, that's the easiest way to uh, talk about it. There's three or four different numbering structures for, for mid-Ohio. This is 13. Um, and it'll always be 13, just like most sport is not... Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. It's always called Motorsport. Okay. Um, this is the men and the boys corner, and the guy that uh, uh, the guy that tracks out on the yellow and goes oh shit, just like you do at turn one at Mid Ohio, um, is the guy that's usually on pole. Most people are scared of this. This is the last corner to gain speed. Um, so Joe, you're normal that uh, you can go to this much throttle. Um, do a track walk next time and take a look to see some better marks because you really need good visual for this um, and you need to be able to, to rock the carousel because if you, if you rock 13, look at the track map, you rock 13 but you get a bad run out of here, this means nothing. The idea is to maximize it and then, but not screw up a run out of the carousel. Is a run out of the carousel, especially if you're racing, will affect you all the way down to here. It's huge. Carousel run is down to here in racing. Because you get a bad carousel run, somebody's somebody's breathing down your neck at turn one or catching you, and they're either passing you going into turn one or they're passing you on the way out of turn one on the way to keel. So you got to prioritize this corner. This is a very uh, tactical uh, execution. Okay, so let's look here and see what's going on. And um, I'm liking that, Joe. That's nice. That's really nice, dude. I'm looking at what's happening here. It's about where the apex is. Picking up throttle, right? Going to throttle. Looks like you're going to throttle in a commitment and you're good to go. Nice work, quick summary.
quick summary um, for the uh, club course charge this area more uh, drive over the entry just plow right through it like you're driving right over it don't go around it go through it and come around this corner a little more you'll be able to carry more speed the problem you should have is in the braking zone right here if this braking zone is really easy it's because you're not going fast enough uh, nice job right here um, opportunity right here there's probably a half a second on this uh, right here because because I'm gonna get rid of uh, our altitude here because right down here in GSUM see that monster dip right here guys right here right where my blue line is that is unused capability of the car it should go up and around this is very typical of all drivers in threshold braking before they see these values we're really talking about how to blend coming off the brake and turning the wheel it's exactly what this is here's where the wheel turns right here's where the opportunity is right there actually there's still opportunity right here as he adds wheel input so basically we're not getting all everything out of the tire from uh, coming off brake into initial wheel input there's a, there's a half a second right here, dude. So shave a half a second. Again, great job. First time at this track. Did uh, 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 pro course, then club course. Absolutely fantastic. Did super great right here. We got more opportunity in 13. Uh, and there's always opportunity for everybody in 13. You got to take it, almost touch your right side mirror to the, uh, to the uh, red wall on approach and tuck it in i like to hit go around the front side of the curbing on the left apex of 13. i like to hit it about 50 percent or two-thirds of the way in and drive right over that portion and you're going so fast it throws you track right outwards where you have to drive on the yellow you want to fight it a little bit to stay on the yellow um, that'll get you extra three four five miles an hour which you're traveling at such a high rate of speed is another it's another half a second, right? It's another half a second. You don't have to carry that speed all the way to the carousel because of the big elevation hump. You just have to carry it through and out of the corner. You have to carry it as in keep on the throttle. The, the, the time savings is into the corner, through the corner, and just out. Now on the other side of the corner. It's through the corner. Through. See, that's a big distance right here. It's a big distance. So, uh, there you go. Nice job, Joe. I'm Eric Meyer. Uh, send me your data, share it on Track Attack, and I'll talk to you later.